What is going on, lovely people? This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our five minute review playlist. In a previous video, we had an introduction about nephrotic syndrome. From now on, we will talk about their histopathology subtypes one by one, starting with minimal change disease, which can be primary, starting in the kidney, or secondary to Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now, let's get started. This is my playlist. Please watch video number one before this video. As you know, there are gazillion causes of hypoproteinemia, low protein in your blood. One of these causes include a kidney problem. When the kidney is losing protein in the urine, we call this protein losing nephropathy or nephrotic syndrome. And this can lead to edema. A tale of two colanders. A normal kidney is like a good colander, leaving no debris behind. But a kidney with nephrotic syndrome is like a colander with very wide holes, letting some protein particles end up in the urine. That's not good. In nephrotic syndrome, you're losing a huge amount of protein in the urine. What do you mean by huge? More than 3.5 grams every day. When you lose the proteins, you get hypoproteinemia, you decrease your oncotic pressure, fluid starts leaving your capillaries, ending up in the interstitial fluid, causing edema. So in nephrotic syndrome, you have high protein in the urine, but low protein in the blood. As a result, you get edema. Nephrotic syndrome. Are you ready? High protein in my urea, low protein in my emia, edema and hyperlipidemia. You're losing all kinds of protein in the urine, including antithrombin-3, that's why you clot, including immunoglobulins, that's why you get infections, including lipoproteins, that's why you get hyperlipidemia, including albumin, that's why you get edema. When it comes to the histopathology, nephrotic syndrome could be many diseases, include minimal change disease, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, membranous nephropathy, diabetes nephropathy, amyloidosis. Nephritic includes other diseases and there are two doofuses in between. Let's talk about nephrotic syndrome. The young, the addict, the thick, the sweet, the green apple. Why do you call it the young? Because it affects children, mainly. As you know, your blood is made of plasma and cells. The plasma is made of water and proteins. You have small proteins, albumin, big proteins, globulin. What is the kidney's job? The kidney's job is to filter the plasma. Okay, just the water, right? Can the kidney filter proteins? A normal kidney should not filter proteins. You should not end up with proteins in your urine. So here's the normal kidney. Here is your beautiful afferent arterial. That's a capillary. That's a blood vessel containing what? Blood. What's in the blood? Plasma and red blood cells. What's in the plasma? Water and proteins. Okay, water should be able to pass. How about proteins? Proteins should not pass. How about small particles like sodium glucose? Yeah, they can pass. How do they pass? They need to pass three layers. Layer number one is the capillary endothelium. By the way, it is fenestrated. It has holes in it. Layer number two is the glomerular basement membrane. And layer number three is the podocyte, and it has foot processes like these. And by the way, that's why we call it podocyte, because in French, feet are known as lupide, pied, foot. I go to school a la pied, meaning on foot. That's why it's a podocyte, because it has many feet. Okay, medicosis, that's easy. So water and sodium will pass through the fenestrated capillary endothelium and then the glomerular basement membrane and then the podocyte foot process and now they are in the filtrate. They are in the nephron. They are in the tubule. And if nothing else happens, they will end up in the urine. That's true. But how come the proteins, albumin and globulin, are not filtered in a normal kidney? Let me tell you, there are two reasons for this. Reason number one, the fenestrations are so narrow and the proteins are so big, so they can't pass in a normal kidney. Number two, proteins are negatively charged if you remember your biochemistry. Moreover, the glomerular basement membrane is a membrane. And in physiology, remember that a membrane is what? Is phospholipid. Say it again because it was so beautiful. Phospholipid. Lipid is fat. Phosphate has a negative charge, as you see here. Oh, so since the phosphate in the membrane is negative and the proteins are negative, they will repel each other. That's why a normal kidney will not let proteins into the urine. Now, here is your kidney under electron microscopy. Can you tell me what these numbers denote? One, two, or three are part of the glomerular basement membrane, or GBM. 
There is basement membrane, there is external lamina and internal lamina. Okay, what are these? These are your podocytes foot processes. The gray part is the foot process. Oh, these are the feet. What are these holes in between? They are called slit membrane pores. These are your endothelial cells and of course they are fenestrated. So let's say you are water in the blood. Okay, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna pass through the fenestrations of the endothelium and I'm gonna pass through the beautiful basement membrane and then through the foot process, slit pores and boom. Now I'm in the Bowman's capsule and then proximal tubule, loop of Henle, distal tubule, etc. So let's talk about minimal change disease. The patient is young, the disease is mild, the prognosis is excellent. Why excellent? Because the patient responds to steroids, like magic. By light microscopy, you see normal glomeruli. By electron microscopy, those beautiful foot processes are no longer foot processes. They have been effaced, they have been flattened. Who flattened them? Cytokines released by your stinking T lymphocyte. And when you destroy me, I will lose my negative charges. I can no longer repel proteins, especially the smallest protein, which is albumin. So albumin is gonna end up in the urine, not necessarily globulin. And this is called selective protein urea. The kidney is damaged, but not so damaged. That's why it's minimal. This disease can be secondary to Hodgkin's lymphoma which tells you that many patients of minimal change disease are adults, not necessarily children. Here's the owl eye to remember the Reed Sternberg cell. Clinically speaking, the baby was fine. And then suddenly there is proteinuria, nephrotic range proteinuria that is more than 3.5 grams per day. And then you gave steroids and boom, everything went back to normal. Easy come, easy go, minimal change disease. Blood pressure is normal because this is purely nephrotic, not nephritic. And if you do immunofluorescence, they are negative because I did not say anything about antibodies here. Why do steroids help? Because steroids inhibit interleukin-1 beta so that your lymphocytes cannot communicate with each other and therefore they will release less cytokines. Okay, medicosis, I gave steroids, the patient did not respond. Now what? You need a kidney biopsy. I already did. Do it again because this could be focal segmental glomerulosclerosis that you have missed. In my hematology playlist, we have talked about lymphomas before. You know they are Hodgkin's or non-Hodgkin's. Pause and review. If you want to learn more about kidney pharmacology, check out my cardiac pharmacology course, medicosisperfectionalist.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense.